Hey everyone, it's Adrian from the Mama Bear Effect. Uh, we've been looking at our statistics on our website and checking out all the pages that have been shared on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and everything. And we've noticed our number one page on our website is the Empowering Our Children page, which obviously is, has a lot of information about teaching your kids about private parts, body safety, consent, empathy, respect, all that great information that's so important for keeping them safe and also hopefully avoiding situations where they could potentially perpetrate abuse against another child. The thing that's concerning us is that there's very little traffic going over to the minimizing abuse page. And the, real, the reality of this is that that is actually where we can prevent sexual abuse of children. Just like when we talk to our kids about not playing with matches. At the same time, we leave matches out of their reach. We talk to kids about looking both ways when they cross the street, but if we're with them, we're holding their hand walking across the street. And if we put them in the car, we make sure to always put their safety belt on, but ultimately, we're the one driving the car. We're the one that is steering them in the direction of safety and looking around to drive defensively and avoid a potential accident. A seat belt is there in case of an accident, and it's not a guarantee that it's gonna keep your child safe. And that's the same thing with sexual abuse. We don't drive the car with our eyes closed and hope that the seatbelt's going to work. And we should not be leaving our kids susceptible abuse by not learning how we can minimize it in the first place. I don't want to put my child's body safety education to the test if I don't have to. So I just want you guys to take some time to go over to the website and learn about minimizing abuse. That is the number one way we can protect our children. Because there are a lot of people, when I read these comments through the Facebook page and through the website, what I'm understanding is that people still don't understand that the people that we trust the most are going to be the first ones to violate that trust. 30 to 40% of these people are family members. As many as 40% are children under the age of 18. So just because your kid is 12 or 13, 14, 17, does not mean that this child is not capable of committing sexual abuse. And it's not going to come from the same motivation as a perpetrator who's 35. There's a difference between a predatory offender and a situational offender. So even if someone is not exhibiting signs that they could potentially sexually abuse a child, it could still happen. Okay, we don't know from looking at someone if they're the type of person that looks at pornography. We don't know you could look at someone and you don't know if they're potentially suicidal. We cannot just look at people and know what's going on in their minds. So the number one thing we need to do is minimize opportunity of one-on-one -on -one situations with our child. And there are a lot of ways that we can do this. There are also a lot of ways that we can reduce risk of sexual abuse simply by talking about it. If you are willing to let people in your circle of trust know that you are educated on sexual abuse, that your child is empowered in how body safety is their right, these people, if there's the potential for sexual abuse, are going to be that much less likely to perpetrate against your child because one, they know you're watching, and two, they know your child is empowered. But it should not be up to our children to protect themselves from sexual abuse. Body safety should be a backup. We are their first line of defense, and it's our job to make sure we're doing everything we can to keep them safe from sexual abuse in the first place. So I just want to put that out there. If you go over to the website, www.themamabeareffect.org, go to the, the tab on the right hand, left-hand side that says minimizing opportunity and understanding abusers. I think you're going to get some really great information there. And as always, we welcome feedback either on the Facebook page or you can send us an email if there's something that we missed or you think there's another resource that would be great. We just want to get the information out there. We do not think that kids should suffer sexual abuse because of our ignorance and fear on this issue. Thanks so much.